Hello, my name is James Kim. I work at Pfizer in Global Biometrics and Data Management Group. And today's talk in Arlene Pharma is Programming Role Changes in Pharma from Open Source and Our Perspective. So types of programming roles um, is changing and their challenges are unique. So we have the traditional statistical programmers who focus on clinical reporting in different therapeutic areas. So they have the business expertise to generate data sets and table listing figures to be submitted to regulatory authorities such as FDA. And this type of activities are usually data-driven programming and quality check processes. So in terms of quality, we have uh, peer review or double-blinded programming, which is unique uh, in uh, from computer science perspective. And we follow SOPs to do these activities. And the focus is really on the uh, keeping the high quality of the data collected in the clinical trial. And these programmers use uh, you work in the closed environment. They use uh, packages to achieve specific tasks. As an example, uh, for pharma, there is a pharmaverse. There are uh, several packages that are available for pharma-specific task. So for example, um, Admiral for atom data generations and R tables for uh, table generations. That, that's in, in R packages. And 95% of these uh, programmers will be users of open source. So they will download, install these packages, use them to achieve uh, their business needs. And this is the um, traditional statistical programmers that we are familiar with in the, in the industry. Mm. Now, the open source software, uh, which is becoming more popular in, in pharma, they are focused on more on the software engineering in the development. So they have the technical expertise and they care about algorithms and logics more on the application side of things than data. Because these uh, programmers have to work with the community of other programmers, uh, they follow the community rules. There are usually uh, a very general um, open source software licenses and code of conduct that you, you must follow in public space. Uh, such as GitHub, and they use different type of development packages to develop other packages. So in, in R, there's, there's use this or test that or that tools that are very useful for developing these uh, R packages. And 95% of these programmers will be contributors to open source. They will not only program, but there, was, there are needs for debugging, needs for documentations, needs for testing, and CI, CD. So these are all contributors to the open source projects so that others like users can benefit from. And this is a new concept, new, new type of role being introduced in the, in the pharma. And this is really happening. And I put the 90 to 9 to 1 ratio at the top the highlighted nine is somewhat in, in the mix of the traditional stat programmer and the open source programmers. So they do understand the business needs for the pharma as well as have the technical skills and experience to lead the software engineering effort in the, in the open source software uh, communities. Now, why, why these changes? Paradigm is changing. Um, Again, the introduction of open source such as R and Python is um, 
more prevalent in in the industry. And remember that uh, FDA can ac accept any uh, kind of software or programming languages for submission. So it's not only limited to SAS, but you are allowed to use other uh, open source software such as Python or R. Uh, it's, it's totally uh, system independent. So you don't have to rely on a proprietary system. For the for the infrastructure level, you will still have the your internal uh, stati statistical computing unit or environment, which will be proprietary for your company, but you will be using much of public private uh, development platforms such as GitHub. But in in your group, you most likely will have standard level or standard programmers. Again, most likely this will be the that nine percent that I mentioned before, uh, sort of engaged in the to bridge the gap between the uh, traditional stack programmers and the open source programmers. So they will be familiar with the internal uh, environment as well as the external uh, open source communities, and there will be that project level people, project level programmers who will be focusing on the um, TA or study programming, and these are most likely that will be covered by statistical programmers. Advisor, we have our SWAT team, and we are the um, the nine percent that I mentioned in the previous slide. So we work with uh, both on the technical side as well as the business side, doing much consultancy on uh, consultancy work on R to help business to achieve their goals. And depending on the size of your programming uh, programming group and the level of uh, their, the, your programmers uh, skill levels and such, the, the ratio of nine, 90 to nine to one may change. And I have a, a good example of that here. This is a slide from the JD Long's presentation at Posicon um, in in September in Chicago. He talked about abstractions and he, he proposed 80 16 4 rule. So this is not necessarily programming, but in a business, you will have 80% normal business users, 16% super users, and 4% group users. Again, he's proposed ratio of the number is slightly different from what I proposed and it could vary from one organization to another. So um, again, depending on the size of your group and size of your company, you might have to adjust the level a little bit, but this, uh, this change you will definitely need it to accommodate the open source software in your organization. And this is the end of my presentation, and I'll be glad to take any questions if you have any. Thank you, and I hope this will help you to plan your uh, next programming group.